In today's news, the BIS just announced yesterday at their three-day innovation summit 2024 that this may be your last chance to buy cheap XRP, that this digital transformation, therefore XRP's takeover, is inevitable. Firstly, we have this massive clip here from the BIS Director General Augustine Carson about bringing different tokens together for commercial money, for central bank money and so on, about the necessary giant leap needed to unleash the promise of tokenization. Listen very closely. But incremental change also has its limitations. The need to look backwards to ensure compatibility with legacy systems constrains what new ones can deliver. This is why I believe that sometimes we need giant leaps. Tokenization is, in my view, a technology with transformative potential for the financial system. Tokenized digital assets contain both the information necessary to uniquely identify assets and their owners, as well as the rules and logic governing their use. When correctly used, tokens could increase the speed, lower the cost, and heighten the efficiency of financial transactions. To unleash the promise of tokenization, i.e. to deliver a giant leap, we need to bring the different kinds of tokens together. Commercial bank money, central bank money, tokens on different assets. Unified ledgers are the platforms where this can happen. Once these different tokens are brought together in the same programmable platforms, new functionalities can be deployed, like smart contracts and composability. So then, how do we achieve giant leaps? How do we transform a vision into reality? The first step in this long journey are exploring and experimenting. But in doing so, we should always have in mind the larger purpose, the giant leap we hope to achieve. This is exactly what we do here at the BIS Innovation Hub. As an example, let me describe our efforts to explore the potential for unified ledgers with Project Agora. We have great hopes for this project and the leap it can deliver and look forward to working with official and private sector partners around the world. So the importance of tokenization, at least in the eyes of the global elites, is pretty evident now. A technology with transformative potential, increasing speed, lowering cost, and heightening the efficiency of financial transactions. Similarly, like what they're doing with Project Agora, to unleash this promise, this giant leap, they need to bring different types of tokens together, like XRP, because don't forget, all of the institutions that are working and part of Project Agora are Ripple partners. But furthermore, as we can hear from Ripple's Reese Merrick, Ripple and their partnerships themselves, like HSBC, are also working on the tokenization of assets like gold. Pay very close attention. You know, at Swell last, um, in, you know, in November, we were able to announce that HSBC, who are, to you know, the large bullion provider globally, one of the largest bullion providers globally, are tokenizing gold. Right, and they're utilizing our custody solution to do so. So, you know, Luxembourg, HSBC, that one. Pardon, Luxembourg, sorry? The Luxembourg uh, yeah. Exactly. So we have we acquired Metico, grade enterprise grade um, custody solution, working with um, top financial institutions, and and from our perspective, it's been you know a win win, both taking those customers forward, expanding the business, and being able to drive new business there. So we have confirmation now that Ripple's goals align with the BIS and what they are desperately trying to achieve. This is just one huge reason as to why this announcement of an imminent giant leap is effectively the announcement of an imminent giant leap with XRP. That This is your last chance to buy cheap XRP. But that is not all because Augustine Carson also made another colossal announcement in this clip regarding a unified ledger. And as we can see here, at the BIS Innovation Summit again, we have in this clip JP Morgan and Circle talking about the necessity of unified ledgers for banks and international settlements. I think you almost need something like that. I mean, it's actually almost a necessity because if you look at the public, and I'm sure this is one Dante and I will disagree on, but if you look at the public blockchain ledgers, they are not fit for purpose for large transactions today. And I'll tell you why. Let's say we were doing a transaction worth $100 million and we were sending money 100 million let's say ourselves and ubs just making it up you know the two banks if we are sending 100 million to ubs on ethereum there are validators who are validating the transaction now what if something goes wrong 
who do I sue? I mean, you can trust in court all you want, but you can't really go to, like, there's no court court where you go and, like, you know, really, like, you know, have, have a discussion. And you need those sorts of backups, you know, if, you know, if someone loses your coat, but you still have the ticket, you want to be able to call someone at the end of the day saying, what the hell, like, you know, you lost a very expensive coat. So I think at this point, maybe public infrastructure will get there one day with things like verifiable credentials, but that path is far away. And you need to get somewhere where people can do trusted transactions between financial institutions with some sort of accountability in the system. Whether that happens through unified ledgers or otherwise, it remains to be seen, but frankly, unified ledgers, RLN, Enbridge, they're all trying to do this. Frankly, we have another project going on called Global Air One at the MAS with Citibank and others. So they're all sort of shades of the same thing, which is you need some sort of a regulated financial infrastructure, and that financial infrastructure should be open to you know, public institutions like central banks, should be open to private institutions like banks or non-banks. I mean, it should be the world's global layer for money movement, otherwise you just will always be in this thought process of being in silos, not to mention I think all these silos have native tokens and that, and I mean I won't even go there, that's a whole different issue as well. So now this again is massive confirmation at the promise that XRP will take over, the XRP itself is a necessity. Ripple CTO David Schwartz already addressed this problem years ago about the need for neutrality. That for a unified ledger to really work, you need a neutral asset like XRP. So that is two huge reasons now why XRP is going to take over and that is a promise, but I'll make it an even three. Here we can see from XRP drops just in from the BIS Innovation Summit again, Project Mandala, shaping the future of cross-border payments compliance, it could serve as the foundational compliance layer for legacy and nascent wholesale or retail payment systems. It aims to address key challenges identified during Project Dumba, which developed an experimental multiple CBDC platform or MCBDC. Pay close attention. So what we did is we, um, we, we partnered with a number of central banks, four central banks to be exact, um, as our core partners on this project. They are the Reserve Bank of Australia, Bank of Korea, Bank of Nagara, Malaysia, and the Monetary Authority of Singapore. So this is how it works. Um, basically, uh, a bank initiates a transaction um, from Bank A to, uh, to Bank B. Usually they, uh, they will exchange basic information, such as the amount, the purpose of the transaction, and the beneficiary details. Um, and they will exchange that information peer to peer. Now, the Mandela Protocol will then take that information and it will determine what are the compliance checks that are required for that particular transaction. The connection between MCBDC and XRP's price explosion comes here from smoke. The connection between Ripple, MCBDC Bridge Platform, blockchain-based SDR. The MCBDC Bridge Platform can be maintained by liquidity pools on Ripple's on-demand liquidity platform using ISO 20022 as a common standard. And here we can see an illustration of MCBDC Bridge Platform that relies on commodity-based SDR using blockchain to connect country CBDCs. And we have an example of how Ripple can and is doing that in Japan already. Look, I get it. I really do. With XRP's stagnant price, it is very hard to believe that XRP will explode in value, that XRP is not a scam, if you will. Even after me showing you these three clips from the BIS, all proven that XRP is going to take over in the very, very near future, they even promised this as much. It can obviously be very hard to look that far into the future to look that long term. But it will happen. At XRP Las Vegas, Ripple CTO David Schwartz literally told the whole world that you can be your own bank by providing liquidity to XRP trading pairs. Buying and holding XRP is a great long-term strategy, but now you will have ways to use your XRP to earn income by utilizing the lending protocol, the AMMs. Furthermore, David Schwartz also provides a great example and argument to silence the XRP haters that Ripple is senselessly dumping XRP on the market. Because look at the synchronicity between XRP and the XLM Stellar chart. There is effectively no difference whatsoever, which is why it's imperative for you to understand that these are utility tokens that haven't and are not being fully utilized right now. They are building this system before our eyes. So you are simply just really, really early, which is a fantastic opportunity. 
And to prove how early we really are, we can see here from Cyprus, Deloitte, not a crypto company, one of the four biggest accounting firms in the world alongside Ernest & Young, PwC and KPMG. And they are announcing that this new digital era, that tokenization is inherently not crypto, but crypto may have long term potential. And XRP is both, of course, a crypto and also working with the biggest institutions, governments, leaders of the world on the necessary giant leap needed to unleash the promise of tokenization. XRP's takeover is already set in stone and it will be worth thousands, if not tens of thousands, in the future to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.